Hey guys, it's Ron Miller here with CashBaseFizzleDerby.org. We have a special guest today, um, Dave Kittle, who is the owner of Vinitial and the co-host of a great podcast um, called PT Tech Talk. And um, thanks for coming in, definitely. And it's so much. Thanks uh, for having me. It's awesome that, that you're down in Florida, and we have the opportunity to even do this. But I'm catching them off guard here. So I didn't even tell him about this. So we are going to talk all PT tech right now. And I'm going to ask him a few questions. No, because um, usually I'm the one asking I know. Long questions. You've been, you've been on a guest uh, with us. Two or three times. At least two or three times. One's so. mobile. <laughs> <laughs> One's mobile when he was driving. So you have to check that out if you haven't seen it. Okay. So we are going to talk some technology and physical therapy and maybe give you a few other questions. So right right now, speaking technology, besides Vinitial, what are your three favorite apps that you use right now? Three favorite apps. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But those are good, those are good. And if you check my phone, you can check the battery usage and it'll actually tell you what you <laughs> use the most. So there's no lying there. Okay, so my next question for you is with your experience starting the initial and tapping into physiotherapy and technology um, what have you found is the most common technology that PTs use well first, could be anything really but yeah I mean you mean I guess it could be device or software anything well the most common technology I guess would have to be the EMR um, very very Unlikely you find nowadays that people are still using pen and paper. However, my old job in New Jersey, Princeton Orthopedics, what's up guys? They, uh, for the first two or three years of my career, we were doing pen and paper and I hated it. Um, so I would say it's very common that most actually have some EMR. You do, right? You have an EMR? I currently am paper, but I use Google Docs a lot too you, okay, so and stuff that. like that too. I'm very thorough with my evals because I see some complex cases. So. Um, my evals are all documented with um, electronic, but most of the time my progress notes and little ins and outs are paper still just because it's so convenient. It's me as a cash based setting. It's I haven't found an EMR system that's cost efficient yet that warrants me to pay the money yet. But sure. um, but uh, maybe more if you when you grow and yeah. expand, <clears throat> maybe it becomes a little more likely. Yep. Okay, next technology question. Um, is there anything new coming out um, in technology in the physical therapy realm besides the initial? Because I think you're definitely on to something with that. And if physical therapists aren't taking advantage of uh, texting and that really personal customer service of texting via phone and stuff like that, that's definitely coming out. But um, and it's new and I think you're ahead of the game um, with that, but is there anything else technology wise that um, have you seen with other clinics, physical therapists, big tech stuff that's coming out soon? I would say it's, it's not, it's something that you know is not big tech um, and it's something that's pretty simple, but it's things like marketing, email campaigns, follow up campaigns. Um, things that we talked about before. I think the last time that I was here, I did a Facebook Live video with Ron, and you were showing us some of your previous follow-up campaigns. Mm -hmm. But this is very, very uncommon in the physical therapy world. I mean, I I've, only, I've only been a PT for five years, you longer. Jeez, oh man, how long have I been? Carry the one. Seven, no, <laughs> seven now? I used to, I still consider myself in, up here like a new grad. Yeah. I still call myself a new grad, but really I've probably been practicing for eight years now. Yeah, I, Se I mean, seven, eight years. I would say, I would say that the, the follow-up campaigns, the, the marketing campaigns, the, as much as some people don't like it, but the add your, your name, your contact information and get like a free report and then you get on an emailing list. It's, it's similar to the direct mail piece that we all use and we still do get. We don't even look at our direct mail anymore. Um, but it's those follow-up pieces that if you're not ready to come to see Ron as a patient, maybe you're on the fence, maybe you're only 25% of the way there, what's gonna get you there in the next three to six to nine months to actually come and see you? Because traditional physical therapy is gonna look at a patient that's only 25% of the way there and just 
not care and just worry about the next getting the next patient on the schedule. Mm-hmm. So I think that's not a big tech thing, but it's something that is being executed more now that it was taken from outside yeah. of physical therapy from other marketing worlds. Yeah. I think, man, from my experience working with other PTs and when people interview me, we are so far behind in technology. The industry. Yeah. The physical, physical therapy. therapy. Yeah. We are so far behind. So far behind. I like tell people some of my strategies and they have no clue what it is. Some people even struggle with PowerPoint presentations still. So Yikes. we have to definitely <laughs> pick this up and start taking advantage of tech. So, um, For sure. so here's a question. Who do you follow on social media personally, whether it's business, personal growth stuff, or in the PT world? Who do you follow on social media? Um, well, I guess some of the PTs that popped out on, to me that I follow on uh, social media, Jerry Durham, because of patient experience, I've always kind of jived well with what Jerry was saying in, in terms of uh, what he was conveying to the, the social media public about mm-hmm. patient experience. And, um, and I was actually, when Jerry, for about six or nine months or so, he was answering every single phone call at his office. Because obviously he had other yeah. PTs seeing his patients. Yep. And he wanted to learn... What's, what's the drop off? Why is there, maybe there's an issue. How can I optimize from the first call and calling them back and optimizing that? And, um, and I was the first one to actually call his office as a fake patient. No PT has ever done this <laughs> in the country. And you can ask Jerry about this. That's funny. No PT has ever called Jerry's office as a fake patient except for me. And so he's one. I follow Aaron LeBauer. I think he's doing great things with marketing, not just to his patients, I actually get on Aaron LeBauer's list as a fake patient because I want to see what content he's sending his patients. Yeah. How's he trying to get them back in the office? I think that's really interesting. And I'm on his list for his consulting services, so his cash base, mm-hmm. physical therapy, consulting side. And, you know, Paul Goff and Greg Todd and how they're, how they're using, like you said, items from outside of physical therapy, bringing it in and using it for their own patients and for their their own consulting, like you're trying to do in coaching mm-hmm. and business coaching. So, oh, those are the, the the names that come to my mind. Any big, any personal ones? Personal growth stuff. Person. Oh, well, I would say for me, Steve Blank, because he's a he's like a the business model canvas type guru. So he's yeah. the type of person that would say before making Vinicial or before making a software, you should go and talk to your your end user, your customer, who would be whatever, a practice owner like Ron, like you, somebody else, and, and asking them like, hey, I have this idea, um, it's it's not even built yet, but here's my idea about this piece of software, would this make sense? And and then you're gonna let me know whether that makes sense, like it's a big, it's a big, like a pain point, or is it just like a nice to have? Yeah. Or would you, pay, would, you pay, would you say, don't even leave today before I pay you for this, because I wanna be the first one in, yeah. And this sounds amazing. So there's a difference, and, and C Blank is uh, one of the biggest ones for the software world about business model canvas and and creating what is called like customer development. So you're developing your customer before you develop the product or the software. Yeah, and you and I know a lot about this. Starting a business is hard, and you're gonna always run into problems. And I asked the personal growth question because, man, if you're trying to do something new and go outside of your comfort zone of being a PT, you're gonna run into problems and hardships, and you need that personal growth stuff. So um, I asked that question just because um, being an entrepreneur, uh, newer business owner, small business, large business, or whatever, you're gonna run into problems. So we need to train ourself to be in that business mindset. A lot of people talk about it. So that's why I asked that question, just to see who you're following. Um, during a workout, are you listening to an MP3 player or a phone? Do you stream everything through your phone or do you still have an MP3 player? You know what, this is a good question for me. Yeah. Because I, I work out in Brooklyn, New York, where, I'm, where I live and I'm just visiting around now. I work out in our garage where I have free weights, mm-hmm. and I can't work out with my phone. I can't either. Because, because for me, unfortunately, and my wife knows, I'm like too addicted. So what? I'll, during workouts or between between sets, I'll look at my phone and, and I'm listening to Pandora yeah. music, you know, rap or mm-hmm. metal or you know, house music or whatever to work out with. 
but then I have push notifications that are sending me my, you know, emails and updates and, you know, Ron <laughs> sent me a text or, you know, this pe- practice owner sent me an email. So then I get distracted and then I keep going with that. So I literally do still have my two separate iPods <laughs> that are static with music. Like I don't take music on or yeah. off. I just leave the music on there. And I leave my phone upstairs and I go into the garage and I work out yeah. most of the time. You need to my do phone. that. You need to do Complete that. Complete disconnect. You need to disconnect and just let the stress out sometimes. So I still have an MP3 player because... Wow. What's the, what's the brand name? It's just like a Samsung one. It's an old okay. one. It has my old playlist. It's just straight 90s hip hop. There you go. Which you understand being from I, the North too. Absolutely. But like we were like, I was raised on 90s hip hop. What's the so, first song that comes to your head from that? That. Like a mob deep shook mob ones, deep. <laughs> shook ones. <laughs> but like perfect. <laughs> when I go to work out, I am in the zone. I don't talk to anyone. I have my MP3 player on, and I just do work. So nice. I just I zone out. I go into beast mode. I release stress. I push myself. I don't talk to anyone. Probably oh, my clothes probably don't even match. I have an MP3 player with me. <laughs> so, do you still have CDs? I do still have a few CDs in my car. <laughs> yeah. I do. Same They're here, not man. Eight tracks or Same cassettes, here. I, do I have so. CDs. I still have a CD changer in in my car, and I have my classic CDs from back in the day that I still have. There you go. Just when I'm going to the gym and stuff like that, or when, like I don't know why. It's just like I'm not letting go or taking advantage of technology. So or, you know, everyone's like that. I know. Everyone wants to hold <laughs> on to something that they're used to, and that's funny. It's, it's hard to move forward with some things. Okay, but. some more technology. And you may or may not invest, but what's your favorite tech stocks to invest in? Oh man, I mean, I, I'm not in the public markets right now, but if I were, I'd have to go Tesla number one because they have probably more upside. Uh, Uber is still private, but I would, I would I wish I could have some private stock and have it go public. Mm-hmm. Um, Someone else that's public, uh, I, I think a safe bet is Amazon. Even though they grow at a very slow rate, it's a safe stock because they're always improving. And oh they have God. so many different... But, I mean, did you see, like, they came out with the uh, Amazon uh, yeah. Amazon Go, was it? The, yeah, the supermarket the, in Seattle? Yeah, that. You see that? Yeah, where you scan your phone, go and you, pick out something. You and, just walk in. Yeah, and, just and, the dr- and the drones. And the yeah, drones. I'm going to quote Gary Vee on this one. Bezos is a beast. <laughs> he so, is. So, yeah, I love... Uh, I'm all about the future. I invest in a lot of tech and people right now. I have a lot of investments in more, uh, you know, mutual funds. I hand it over to a financial advisor. But, but the play money, I just invest in some individual stocks that I believe in. More tech, because I think we're in a prime time right now to take advantage of technology. Right. And technology exponentially increases every two Higher years. Higher multiples in tech. So stock, right? I mean, it's just a matter of time. You're going to hit something. So I love. Solar City and Tesla, even though the government stuff involved with that, I don't really like. But uh, I believe in Elon Musk and and his passion. I think he's going to do some great things. So yeah, we I can invest. do future talks on Mars. Yeah, like this we can, on Mars. <laughs> I love anything. Amazon is great. What else do I invest in? Um, I invested in Facebook a while ago. And I'm doing better on that because when Facebook learned well, you're, how because you're giving Facebook money anyway. Yeah, there's your ads. Yeah, I'm giving them money. <laughs> you're yeah, money, taking money. But. Uh, since they learned how to make money, I invested in Facebook. What are tech? To, I mean, anything Google. Sure. Alphabet. Yeah. Anything Google, um, Amazon. I love Tesla, Solar City, and them j- just merged. Anything futuristic, kind of going in, like vertical gardens and stuff like that too. So, okay, I think that was my last tech one. So, some personal questions. Oh boy. If if you had a choice between Chipotle, Moe's, or Codoba, which one would you choose? Chipotle. Even Good though call. they had that Good whole call. Ebola scare. I, it didn't the lines st- are shorter now. It didn't stop me. <laughs> no. Every Chipotle, You're the only one there. Every Chipotle that I go to is lines out the door. What do you think, Still, that, what do you think that is, like as a business model? I or is think it the business, or what do you think it is? It's, I mean, they, they no, one has, no one has met their fresh quality, and you can customize your order, and it's fast. It is and fast. it's great food. So if, I don't know how they roll those burritos yeah. and they yeah. pack them. Okay. Um, what's your favorite sports team? I think it's the Philly, Phillies, right? Philadelphia Phillies. Why? 
Are you from Philly? Uh, I'm, about, I'm from, from my, where I grew up, my house, my home, where my parents uh, raised me in New Jersey. Door to door from where the Philly Stadium is, 20 minutes. So oh, nice, okay. That's my favorite team, even though I'm in New Jersey, right across the bridge. And uh, I love baseball the most, and I've played baseball my whole life. Nice. And I played one game there, actually, in college. I played in their stadium. Nice. There you go. Because I'm, I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Originally, so you, so, you, but you're a Steelers fan, so we. I'm a Steelers fan. I grew up a diehard Penn State fan. Did my graduate studies at University of South Carolina, so I'm a Gamecock, and then I married into a Florida State family, so my college football thing is all over the place, and I'm a Steelers fan. So I'm primarily football, but um, I always root for any Philly, any Philly, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania team. There you go. I'll take it. Um, what's your morning routine? Oh man. This is going to dictate success or not. I'm just <laughs> morning routine. What's I'm, your morning routine uh, on I, average? I wake up, I check my phone. Well, if I turn my alarm off, I check my phone uh, and I, I have an array of notifications, which, you know, it could be argued there needs to be some other, you know, thing before you. But for me right now, I check my, my text, my email, uh, I, I check most you know some of those social channels because me i'm trying to leverage as much of those social channels for mm -hmm. free as possible so i check my phone first uh make myself a cup of black coffee and then i jump on my computer nice usually having an early morning uh skype call with my developer my my business partner there you go best tech company and it's not specific it's just who would you choose apple microsoft google or amazon i lied this is a tech question uh, well, definitely not Microsoft. So you said Amazon. You said Amazon, Google, or Amazon, Google, Microsoft, or Apple. If I to go work there, or overall in general, or just in general, like who's going to win? What's your brand of choice? Which one? Um, you know, like if you asked me last year, I probably would have said Apple. But after seeing like just continual improvements, I would say Amazon, including I we got. My wife and I, uh, last year we got, or earlier this year, we got the Amazon Echo. And listen, oh, it's, nice. it's, it's unreal. Nice. I, I deleted, I don't know if it's a big deal, but I mean, I deleted the, the Weather Channel app from my phone. I don't have to look for weather anymore, which is great. So I say, Alexa, what's the weather today? And it says, today in Brooklyn. No way. It's, right now, it's whatever degrees, That's with a low of this and a high of this. That's and then awesome. I say, Alexa, will it rain today? And then it tells me, the percentage of rain today, and then I know if I need to bring an umbrella or not, but I don't have to touch anything. That's awesome. And Amazon tapped into that before I think almost anyone or at Google, least yeah. really brought it to fruition. So, I mean, they have the Amazon Echo, they have the Go store in now in Seattle, and they're gonna have probably more stores, and yep. I would say Amazon. Who is the best pizza you've ever had? I'm only asking this because <laughs> you live in New York, New so. York who has the best pizza? Giuliana's, it's a hard one. Giuliana's Pizzeria in Brooklyn. It's in a, in a neighborhood called Dumbo, Brooklyn, down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. And uh, started by Patsy Grimaldi, who originally started Grimaldi's Pizza. I mean, it, 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 if you're asking and, yeah. and someone can tell you a story about the pizza place and the owner and the family, I mean, um, That's there's, good. there's something special there. So. Yeah. Juliana's in Brooklyn. If you're in Brooklyn, I can't stand thick Chicago type type pizza. I love the New York type thin thin crust with thin lots crust. of. I like lots of vegetables on it and stuff like that. So, but man, yeah, there's nothing better than New York style pizza. Um, last question: What book are you reading right now? I, it's in this bag or in the car right now. I'm reading Made in America by Sam Walton. It's his own story. Mm -hmm. It's a and, great story. And I actually, uh, you've read the book? No, but I've heard excerpts from it. So it's uh, it's incredible already. I'm not even that far into it, but it's a really thick book. It's like hundreds and hundreds of pages. And um, I don't shop at Walmart. Um, I know there's a lot of bad things about it, about Walmart in general, how they treat employees, whatever, I don't know. But that guy was obsessive and he started and ran a killer business and here's another thing you hear this all the time like oh you're you know oh ron you're so successful and you know it's like an overnight success sam walton at walmart he started three stores that were not they weren't called walmart before walmart yeah 
And before that, he started two other stores that were part of a franchise, someone else's franchise. So at 44, he started the first Walmart store. And then it mm-hmm. grew, and everyone thought he was an overnight success. He's like, nah, like, check the last 20, 25 years of what I've done. You know? I love reading books on success and what other CEOs, entrepreneurs, businessmen, and women do for success. It's just fascinating to me. I love reading books on stuff like that. So, um, but that's actually the last question that I have, stuff like that. But uh, just want to sneak in a quick little interview, talking some tech. Yeah talking some physical awesome. therapy, and then also going over some personal questions. So if you have any questions for us, um, you can reach me um, at catchpacephysiotherapy.org. Um, if you get, if you want to get in touch with Dave here, um, what's the best way to get in touch? Dave at initial.com. Email. Keeping it simple. Thanks. Thank you.